Hi, it's the host of Their Name Is. I wanted to let you know that I'm currently working on season two of the show. It's also National Missing Persons Week in Australia, and I thought it's a perfect opportunity to provide some small updates and tell you a little bit more about what I do here. Their Name Is is published under Ezra Magazine, which is the magazine I founded in 2013. I've worked as a journalist both here in Australia and overseas in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom. I hung my journalism hat up in 2016, but the curiosity for the truth and research never really went away. This podcast is one small cog in a system of telling the truth of those long missing and often presumed murdered. It endeavours to ask you, the wider public, to confront the uncomfortable truths of our society. That women are more likely to die at the hands of someone they know than of a stranger, in a detailed examination of 152 intimate partner murders between 2010 and 2014, where there was credible information showing a history of violence prior to the murder, only two cases were found where a woman killed a man she had a history of abusing. In the 2018 report, it showed that men commit more than 80% of murders between couples who have a history of domestic violence. The overwhelming majority of those men had a history of abusing the women they ultimately killed. In the 20% of murders committed by women, over two-thirds were women killing men who had been abusing them. The media and entertainment industry plays a significant role in how perpetrators of violence and homicide are portrayed. While storylines in novels, films, and television feature unprovoked attacks by strangers and cases involving bizarre methods of killing, the truth of the matter is that you are more likely to be murdered by someone you know than a stranger knocking at your door. In fact, the prevalence or frequency of stranger homicides in Australia has stayed pretty much consistent. According to the Australian Institute for Criminology, between 1989 and 90, and 2022 to 2023, only 12%, or about 1,138 of homicide incidents, were stranger homicides. And if we look at the data even further, there is a significant gender disparity. In 2022 to 2023, 87% of homicide offenders were male while 69% of homicide victims were male. Predominantly, men are killing men. There is also a massive First Nations disparity in terms of victims and offenders. 49 of the homicide victims in Australia identified as First Nations, 35 men and 14 women, or about 20% of victims. The homicide victimization rates of Indigenous men was more than seven times higher than non-Indigenous men, at 7.65 per 100,000 people, compared to just 1.04 per 100,000. The homicide rate was 3.07 per 100,000 for Indigenous women, compared with 0.45 per 100,000 for non-Indigenous women. In a 2019 update by the World Health Organization, an estimated 475,000 people worldwide were victims of homicide, which is a global rate of about 6.2 per 100,000 people. Some 80% of homicides occur in males and the highest rates are in males aged 15 to 29 years. Homicide is caused by a mix of factors at the individual, relationship, community, and societal levels. Societies where young people, particularly young males, make up a greater share of the population tend to have higher homicide rates. Homicide rates tend to be lower, where states have legitimacy in the eyes of citizens and can deliver key political goods such as justice based on the rule of law, and have low levels of corruption. Poverty, economic inequality, and ethnic fractionalization and the availability of guns and alcohol are also risk factors for homicide. And you may be wondering or thinking to yourself, why not just arrest more people and stop them from committing homicide in the first place? But that, in my opinion, should be the last resort. In fact, in one city in Colombia, Medellin, local government invested in the public transport system and upgrading of urban infrastructure to improve residents' access to jobs and attract new businesses to impoverished neighbourhoods. The local government also made other improvements to these neighbourhoods, including additional lighting for public spaces, new pedestrian bridges, street paths, library parks, buildings for schools, recreational centres, and centres to promote micro-enterprises more police patrols, and a family police station next to a gondola station. A 2012 evaluation examined the effects of this change in the built environment on violence in Medellin. It took advantage of a natural experiment in which some 25 neighbourhoods benefited from the new public transport system and investment in infrastructure, and compared that against 23 other neighbourhoods. 
Any pre-existing or differences between intervention and the 23 control neighbourhoods were adjusted using statistical methods. The evaluation found that the decline in homicide rate was 66% greater in the intervention neighbourhoods than in the control neighbourhoods, and residents' reports of violence decreased a staggering 75% more in the intervention neighbourhoods. In Season 2 of Their Name Is, I'll be focusing on South Australian long-term missing and presumed murdered people with the first episode focusing on Annabelle Strezlecki, who disappeared from Clare, South Australia in 1998. 